Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the They Came From Beyond rules by Onyx Path Publishing. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to themes for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include various hijinks, mature language, and possible show rewrites. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc., which may or bear resemblance to entities living or dead, is strictly coincidental. And now, on with the show. Thank you for joining us again another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I am normally your keeper or handler, Michael Diamond, but we have a very special game we'll be playing tonight, and that is They Came From Camp Murder Lake, and that means I'll be turning the table and all of the sharp implements over to director Miranda. So Miranda, take it away. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Welcome to an exciting game of They Came From Camp Murder Lake from Onyx Path Publishing. Uh, Murder Lake is a supplement from, or a supplement for, They Came From Beyond the Grave, which brings us all of the fun of 80s slasher flicks. And before we get to our cast throw, though, a little pre-credit sequence for you. Our film opens, as they often do with an older man running through the woods. You hear him gasping for breath while sticks snap below his feet as he makes his way along a narrow but well-traveled path. He emerges on a road and for a moment stops and listens, looking back behind him, hearing and seeing nothing. He leans against a thick post, gasping to catch his breath. From behind him, a series of handkerchiefs tied together wrap around his throat, pulling him tight against the pole. Clutching at the makeshift rope, saliva runs down his chin as he takes his last breath before slumping over. The camera pans up to a sign reading, Welcome to Camp Laughing Hills. Starring Tegan Gilbert as Lance McCutchinson, a transfer student rebranding themselves. Guest starring James as Eugene Francis Faubacher, uh, nerd and uh, aspiring medical student. Introducing Nate Hughes as Quentin Tavish, innocent who's fallen into an with an older crowd. I hope I can get him to like me. With special appearance by... Hi, this is Mike, and I'll be playing Kevin Doxon, class clown and the Joker in your deck. It's the summer of 82. Uh, Don't You Want Me is topping the charts. E.T. is the highest grossing film of the year. The shorts are short, the hair is big, and you're all actors in your mid to late 20s playing teenagers. Whether your parents insisted on you getting a summer job, you're looking for an opportunity for some summer romance, or you need keg money for the weekends, you've all accepted positions at the recently opened summer camp outside of town, the Beaver Falls Summer Camp. It's your last day of freedom before starting your new, jo- your new job. So let's get to know each of our characters and find out what they are up to. Uh, Tegan, what would Lance be doing on his last day of freedom before starting his new summer job? Lance on his last day of freedom before starting his summer job would be in 1982, I guess, tightening up my skateboard deck, putting some new wheels on, and sewing a new patch on my jacket that is already over covered with patches. Uh, so you might be hanging out in your garage then? Oh, well, I mean, it's my stepdad's garage, but yeah. Yeah, you, uh, hanging out in your, your, your stepdad's garage, uh, tightening up your uh, deck on your skateboard uh, when your mom comes out uh, to talk to you before your big first day of work. Lance. Sweetie, I'm just so happy that you've decided to come and uh, get get a job. I, I I mean, I know it was hard for you to move here, and um, but I'm just I'm real I'm real proud of you. It's not like it's a real job. I'm just flipping burgers at the local summer camp. Yeah, but I mean, I just it's nice that you're taking an interest in the family business. I mean, when we bought that plot of land out there that hasn't been used in who knows how long, I'm just. Uh, I, I didn't think you'd you'd want to you'd you'd want to take part in it. So, I know, you know, I hate trees and needles and sap and stuff like that. But I just kind of, you know, want to stop pushing so much. But pushing what? 
hey, I know that you've had it really hard since dad died and all, so I just kind of want to make things easier for you this last summer, you know? Oh, well, I appreciate that, Lance, and I'm sure that you'll make uh, plenty of plenty of friends up there. Of which one could be Eugene. Hey, uh, James, what's Eugene getting up to on his uh, last day of summer before his big job? Eugene is currently at his home, a fairly sizable house because his father is one of the local doctors and his overbearing mother is currently uh, pre-smothering him and getting in as much smothering as possible before he goes off on camp. So he's, of course, been had his inhaler shoved in his face three or four times. And yeah. Yeah. Yes, mom. I'm, I have this. Okay. It's just like a couple of, it's a couple of weeks in the woods. Okay. It's not a problem. Sweetie, I know you're a big boy and everything, but I don't like you going up there. I don't like you going up there to that camp one bit. Mom, it's it's not going to be a problem, okay? I, I, I'm going to have a good time. I'm probably even going to meet some friends my own age. Nope, nothing, nothing ever, nothing good ever happened up at that camp. I don't, I don't like it one bit. Oh, nothing ever good happened at that camp. UG, what have I told you about talking back to me? I, I didn't say anything. Mom slams the door. You storm out of your house. Yep. Stuff in a backpack and start heading out. Nate, what is Qu Quentin getting up to on his last day before he starts his job? Oh, packing, of course. Oh, I gotta make an impression. I gotta get him. So across Quentin's bed, he's got a Smurf's bed, sh bed spread still. Uh, he's thinking maybe it's time to get that switched out, but not quite yet, not quite yet. There's Jordash jeans. There's some Lee shorts. There's a lot of neon. I've got my headbands and I've got sweatbands and I've got trek suits. I'm trying to decide and I pull out, you know, the, the, the teal colored shorts, put them out. No, those aren't it. Put them back. The darker teal. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. And I'm just trying to get everything perfect. I got to make everything perfect. I got to make the right, perfect first impression. Then I look at my bookshelf. I pull out. I pull out my Pilgrim's Progress adapted for kids book and put it and you know, put it on the top. And then I look at it for a second. Maybe not. And I put it back on the shelf. And I go back and I get rid of the plain white headband. I put in the it's just I'm all a dither. I say, Dad, Dad, do you know where my new Reeboks are? Dad? They're in the closet by the stairs, Quentin. <sighs> All right, do you think I should pack them? Do you think, should I wear them? Dad, what do you think I should do? Quentin, just do whatever you want, kid. No, no. Everything I do, whatever I want, that's when everything goes wrong. I can... Pack them, don't okay. pack them. Who cares? Uh, uh, the kids will care. Everyone, everyone will care, Dad. Don't... Okay. Okay, you know what? I grabbed the Pilgrim's Progress, adapted for kids, back off the bookshelf. I put it back in the suitcase, go downstairs. I'm going to go, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, Dad, I'm going to pack them. I grab, grab the Reebok and walk upstairs. Wait, or maybe I should, it's going to take up a lot of room. Maybe I should wear them. Dad, should I wear them? I don't care. Sure, wear them. Just wear them. Wear them, Quentin. But they'll get dirty. Dad, should shoes be dirty at camp or should they be clean? Should I? What's cooler, Dad? For the love of God, you just wear the shoes. Get them dirty. I will buy you other shoes. <sighs> I just doesn't understand. Okay. Back to my room. I'm going to pack them. I think I'm going to pack them. Jelly swatch. And then I look at the picture of Mom on my nightstand, pick it up, put it on top of my Pilgrim's Progress, and then I, no, put it back on the nightstand. No, you know what? They put it back on top of Pilgrim's Progress. And Mike, what is Kevin getting up to on his last day before work? Uh, he's probably at the local video game arcade. He's uh, probably exhausted all of his quarters and he's standing out front with his friends smoking cigarettes, watching girls go by and, you know, just generally, I don't know if concerned is the right word, but he's pent up a little bit because 
he's a little worried that there isn't going to be enough fun at Camp Beaver or wherever he's going. Yeah, uh, Kirk Hoffman, uh, your longtime ba- uh, pal buddy, shows up and uh, hey, hey, Kevin, uh, you are you coming? Are you coming to the Kager on uh, Friday? I let this long sigh out, and you can sort of see the my shoulders drop a little bit, and there's you know my denim jacket, which of course has the sleeves cut off of it completely, and there's a big Van Halen logo on the back of it. I just push my head against the, you know, lean my head back against the brick wall of the arcade wall and, and say, no, no, I'm being sent to the land of beaver. Oh, sh- shit, that might not be that bad, no, man. No. I hear, uh, no, I hear Shannon's going up there. <laughs> what? Yeah. I just, I heard from Dakota, who heard from Heather, who heard from Tracy, that, yeah, Shannon's Shannon's going up there. She's like the head girls something, whatever, up there. This You might have a shot with her this summer. Let me tell you something. There are three things in life that you need to understand. One, dirty jokes are what's going to get us through the Reagan era. Two, and more importantly, cheap beer is easy to find. It is also easy to get a hold of if you're underage, if you know the right person. And three, and most importantly, is that girls who play volleyball are always on the top of the list. Yeah, maybe they got a nice one of those uh, sand volleyball pits. Those girls in those shorts, man. Whew. So no, I'm not coming to the Kegger, obviously, because I'm going to be at Camp Beaver Falls. You might have a good Camp Beaver summer. <laughs> he kind of nudges you in. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this, if anything, uh, I'm going to have to keep it interesting because I got a feeling about, um, you know, most kids that get sent to camp, you know, um, well, they don't have an arrest record as long as I do, first of all. Um, all of which I'm getting done before 18, clearly, because who doesn't want to have their record completely wiped clean? Um. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm trying to be. Anyway, what do you what are you doing with your summer? Oh shit, man! I don't know. I think my old man's gonna make me get a job or something. I'll, I'll I don't know. Probably I'll probably just try to work at the theater again. I man. Yeah. yeah. It's weird that they're reopening that camp though. After I mean, it's been what like I don't know, like fifteen, like twenty years or something. And they're probably getting tired of not having any place to put all these kids. Well, um, those Richie, Richie, Mc, McCutcheon, whatever's, uh, you know, bought it up and, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they like to feel like they have some sort of power, but they don't. They're just, they're still, they're just in the same fishbowl as we are. I mean, listen to your Pink Floyd. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we'll we'll have to catch up. Uh, you know, after you after you get back from camp and stuff, you have to let me let me know how it goes with uh, Shannon. I want all the I want all the dirty details, man. Just her, so I can leave the rest out. I smile. <laughs> no, no, Kevin. Uh, I, I want it, I want the whole list, man. Okay, okay. I'll write. I'll make a list. I'll write it on my hand here. I take out a pen and start writing S H A N N on my hand. And we will smash cut to the gang arriving at camp. Now, it's the day before the kids arrive. How is everyone getting to camp? Are your parents driving you? Do you have your own car? My stepdad is dropping me off up at our property up there. Yeah, and your parents obviously don't work there. You don't work at your own camp. But you probably have met, like, the head camp counselor and everyone else that works there stopping by your house and such. But uh, your parents are just going to nah, drop you off and let you do your thing. Be independent for the summer. Wait, so like, do wait, did I, but I got the summer job like at my own camp that my parents own. Yeah, and definitely on your own merits. Oh, okay, good. I just want to make sure it wasn't nepotism. Oh, no, never. You definitely aren't in the nicest bunk uh, with the best well-behaved children in the camp. Perfect. This is going to rock. Quentin has a silver Ford Escort, but he's convinced his dad to drive him anyway because, I mean, I'm going to be gone all summer, Dad, and so maybe we can, it should be a good time to to talk and things before I'm I'm gone all summer so that we can spend some time. I just, I'm going to really miss you. 
Yeah, uh, sure, Quentin. Um, yep, we can talk on the way there. Good, because I got some questions about my school schedule next semester, so I'm hoping that maybe I can just like really, uh, what did I, I pick your brain about it and, and get your advice so I could I could choose the right classes. How's Kevin getting to camp? Uh, I think Kevin likely has a car. It's probably nothing super, super flashy. Uh, I'm going to say that he has a 1979 AMC Gremlin hatchback. Clearly, it's powder blue. And uh, he's taken his uh, light artistic talents to the side of it to pen and his own red racing stripe that sort of goes on the the left and right hand sides of the car up the up the side of the car it's also where he keeps his weed fantastic and how about eugene uh eugene is uh drive or riding in the back of his parents car his mom is in the passenger seat uh, either fussing over his father's driving or fussing over something in the back i won't make you do the whole fussing and the dad is summarily ignoring the both of them and marveling as he's driving over his new cellular mobile telephone, which he insists that they call someone every hundred miles or so just to show off that they're out in the woods calling someone on a telephone. All right, so you all arrive at camp and uh, are kind of huddled up with the rest of the camp counselors. There's a few kids here that you know from school, obviously, uh, because we can't run a whole camp with just the four of you. And you're all greeted by the head counselor, uh, Stanley Morris. Uh, you can call him Mr. Morris. You can call him Stanley. He's okay with that. You know, kids, uh, folks have been working hard to get this place back in fighting shape for the summer. But obviously there are some rules here uh, that I expect you all to follow. One, uh, no smoking, no drinking, no doing drugs of any type, kids. Come on now. And I need you to stay out of the surrounding woods unless uh, it's for specific camp sanctioned activities. It's easy to get lost on the trails out there at night and uh, we don't need to have to form any search parties to go after lost campers, let alone lost counselors. That includes hiking up to the falls. And also we have high moral standards here at our camp and we expect each of you to uphold these standards and to be positive influences on the campers while they are under our care. If any trouble arises, I expect you each to come to me personally first and then I will be the one that handles it. Do you have any questions or am I clear on all that? Clear. All you do is talk, 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 I quip. Well, these are important. These are important things uh, to be said. Look, I'm just laying the laying the ground rules here so we can have a good, positive, wholesome summer here at Camp Beaver. <clears throat> so where is it? Well, uh, where's what? Where's this beaver you keep talking about? Uh, the beavers are indigenous to the whole area. Yes, thank you, Eugene. Uh, the beavers are indigenous to this area. And the lake was lovingly named after them. A lot of beavers in the lake then? Uh, no, I mean, usually they kind of keep themselves the, the other waterways around the area and not specifically to the lake, but... So, uh, Director, I'm, I'm purposely trying to... Um persuade the crowd to be um, in, a, in a more jovial mood. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to break this counselor now here at his introduction. Why don't you roll me? I would say that this is going to be a uh, like a culture presence. Okay. I'll take the, the, the bonus die for quipping. Yes. You do get a bonus die for making a quip. And so in this system, it's eight and up with tens being worth two, yes? Correct. So that's seven. Oh, yeah. He he has started talking about the beaver and beaver falls and beaver lake and a lot of beaver. And then everyone in the crowd around him starts to chuckle and they can see him like people are kind of holding their shirts up so that he can't see him laughing. They're whispering to each other and he realizes what's happening and his face is getting more and more red and he's getting more and more flustered with what's happening. And, and everyone's kind of drawing their attention towards towards you engaging in this back and forth with this head counselor. You, you know, I got to tell you, I was concerned at first before I came here today, but 
with all the beaver that you're talking about that's here, it's clearly going to be a fantastic summer. I, oh, um, uh, look, look, okay, look, um, look, the, the, uh, the, the kids are going to be here in the morning, okay? Uh, so uh, just get a lay of the land, get yourselves all set up in your in your bunks. The buses are going to be here at 10 a.m. I expect you to all be dressed in 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 your gear and and ready to have some fun. I salute. I'm ready for fun. Is anybody here ready for a party? And absolutely no parties. And just, oh my God, just go, please go get set up. And he just, is, his head down, turns to walk away to leave you to your own devices. I stand up and sort of like brush myself off. I don't understand why everyone was so worried about the um, livelihood of the beaver in the area. This place is lousy with beavers. Well, you know, Eugene, as you'll come to understand later in life, uh, God's willing, a healthy beaver is very important to the natural environment. Well, I, absolutely. Local ecology thrives on beavers. I know I do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, Kevin. That's clever. <sighs> Work in progress. So, um, I point at you, Lance. Don't your parents own this place? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are you coming at me immediately with don't your parents own this place? I just want to make sure that we all understand the ground rules, right? You're going to be the one that's going to help us get away with all the fun. Give me one good reason to care about your personal fun. Oh, the beer I brought? The beer you brought. And I go ahead and open up my pocket and I just kind of like lean over and show him there is like enough cocaine for several good nights. Okay. I don't show Eugene. I just show Kevin because it's in my pocket and Kevin's got to look in my pocket. Eugene tries to leave. What are you guys looking at? <laughs> He'll just button up my pocket immediately. I lean into Kevin and I just say, it's okay. I have a permit. And that is a quip for Lance. I've hit three quips already. All right. Well, I'm going to sort out the bunking then. At least try to find one that doesn't uh, isn't full of ticks or, you know. What, uh, a few old uh, jackets and clothes from however long ago this last place was open? Now, as far as camp locations go, this is everything that any TV camp, movie camp would have. You've got boys' cabins, girls' cabins, archery range, arts and crafts, kitchen, dining hall, medical office, manager's office. There's a lake, there's a dock, there's canoes, woods surrounding the camp, falls, and pretty much anything that you can think of that would be at a camp will be at this camp. And an indeterminate distance away from everything else at this camp. Uh, there are no broad aerial shots of the camp, so we don't actually, there's just separate sets for each one of these things. Or it's probably the same set and they just tear down some of the stuff and put up the other stuff or put a different sign on the building. Fantastic. I'm going to sort out where I'm staying or which bunkhouse we're staying in. Um, I'm probably going to position myself at least a reasonable proximity. Uh, I don't want to be too close to you know, staff offices, but I don't want to be too far. Yeah, there are assigned cabins, and I can imagine Kevin going up to them and picking out which cabin he wants to be in and then crossing out whoever's name is there and putting his name there and putting the other person's name somewhere else. Up to and including, like, actually physically moving signs on the outside of the door. Like, nope, take this one down. I'm staying over here, and now you're staying over here. That he, he's He's that guy. Yeah. You said the guy's name was Mr. Morris? Yes. All right. Stanley Morris. Quentin's got a map and he's familiarizing. I'm familiarizing myself with the camp. I want to make sure I have a good lay of the land so that I can perform the duties and of my job to the utmost of my ability. That's fine. The camera will never actually show that map. I've just got a piece of paper that I'm holding in my hand and I'm looking around and I'm walking around. I've got super, super tight uh, today, I think it's sort of a, a, a hot pink, super, super tight, hot pink shorts. And I'm going place to place. And I go back to the assigned dorm. I look. Huh. I go back to Mr. I found Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris, um, I don't, do you know where I'm staying? My name is crossed off of where I was supposed to stay. And I'm not sure what, what bunk I should take because... 
Um, it looks like uh, uh, maybe I got moved because my name is is crossed off on the sheet. Do you know where I should be? Where should I go? I need to know where to go, Mr. Morris. Quinn, just it's on the sheet. It you, it crossed crossed off. It's crossed off. Some yeah, uh, didn't you you crossed it off or something? You probably assigned me to a different bunk, so I, I need to go to where that is. But I don't know where it is. No, no, it shouldn't be crossed off. Just go to that same bunk. Just go to the bunk that has your name by it. But Mr. Morris, like I said, the name's crossed off. So some, okay. I'll go back to the bunk and open the door. I look towards where the number scratched in the in the, in the bunk would be. Do I see Kevin or is Kevin just moved in? Uh, Kevin's there. Is Kevin's there. There's a person there. Uh, he might be if he stayed. Would Kevin have stayed to unpack oh, his yeah. stuff? Oh yeah, he's yeah. been packing his stuff. And- so I walk over. I've got my my Jordash little suitcase over my shoulder. Um, hi, I'm Quentin. I sort of tilt down my comic book. Hey. Um, there might be um, a mistake because I think you're in my bunk because Mr. Morris, who I already talked to about it, said that I should just go to where my bunk is. So this is where he said I should go. So, um, uh, so, um. See, there was a change of plans. You didn't see the change in the sign? Mm- it was, my name was crossed off, but um, I think that was a mistake because I'm Quentin and that th- this is where I'm supposed to be, I think. Quentin, let me ask you something. I sort of get out of the, sit up in the bunk. I put the creep show comic book down. You, um, you ever been to camp before? No, this is my first time. My dad oh. said I should go somewhere else so that I could get some, it, well, Never mind. I can see. So, you. so, so you don't you don't know the rules then? That's part of the. That's why you're. That's why I got it. I got it. I clap my hands together. E- Eugene snickers humorously from the corner, extremely quietly. You you knew. This is your first time. It's okay. You don't understand. So, mm-hmm. anytime yeah. you go to camp, and there are mm-hmm. campers there who have been more senior campers like myself, perhaps mm-hmm. Eugene mm-hmm. here. I point over my shoulder. We sort of get first right of refusal on whatever bunk we want. And then the the new kids come in and then they Uh get sort of what's left over. Oh, okay. Um, What's left over? Oh, here. Yeah. Let me show you. Let me show you. I I walk, I walk Quentin out the back door of the bunkhouse and sort of point over towards like likely the bunkhouse that has like the somewhat sunken floor it's the one that, like, if the lake floods, probably just a slight corner takes on water. You, you see that one over there? That's sort of the the beginner's house. That's that's where you're going to make your mark this year. That's where you're going to learn all sorts of just things that you probably had no idea you'd learn before you came to camp this year. That's that is where you're oh. staying. That there is valued real estate, my friend. Should I take down the the yellow tape and? Everything like is is it is it all taped up because I'm the first to go there? Yeah, you see, the the tape is what shows everyone that that you're claiming it for the first time. <gasps> oh, so you probably took the tape down from this one because oh, it makes sense. Is yeah, it, Kevin, are you are you sure it's okay for me to do this? Absolutely I quit. positive. Absolutely positive. I've already cleared it with Mr. Morris. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Eugene. Thanks a lot, Kevin. It is, it's my first time, so I'm I'm just here trying to figure. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, and I, I'll hold my hand out for a literal 1982 handshake. This shit would get you killed in 1982. Oh wow! E- Eugene shakes his hand. I- I'll make sure that everyone. I'll do my best to make sure that everyone understands that here, cabin buddy. Don't worry. Thanks, Eugene. And hey, um, you can come visit anytime. Um, that's definitely a plan. <laughs> and I hear that as a yes. I turn around and I go over to the condemned bunkhouse. I have to pull on the door four, five, six times because it's warped out of the frame. And then it finally opens a shatter of dust and debris and dead, probably dead uh, insects fall down. And I turn around, give a thumbs up, walk inside. I give Quentin a thumbs up from my bunkhouse and then whisper under my breath, quipping, great job, genius. Oh my God, you'll believe anything, won't you? 
Oh man, <laughs> isn't that the isn't that the one where they found all those dead cats? Yeah, there's one every year, <laughs> every single year. Hmm. Lance is probably walking around, possibly also trying to find uh, his cabin, or maybe he's doing something else. What is Lance getting up to? No, Lance immediately went to the kitchen pantry to kind of like raid and fill his spare room in his bag with any snacks that the camp had had prepared that he can keep in his own bunk going through rifling through the tools and everything and just being like oh that's that's really nice okay i'm gonna need that wine opener and then i imagine crosses across between the dirt road between the kitchen and that cabin with with kevin and that that nerd and walks in you know after all of the rest of this stuff has gone down with quentin yeah, at one point, the head chef walked in and was getting ready to tear into whoever was in the kitchen and then saw that it was you and asked if you needed a can opener for the can of pudding that you had taken. No, and I just turned to him and I say, you know, it's okay. I, I have a permit. And I and I take the can opener <laughs> out of his hand <laughs> and the pudding. And I just walk the fuck out. So Lance arrives with uh, Kevin and Eugene. Quentin is just sweeping out the dirty ass cabin. Just sneezing constantly. Hey Lance, come check this out. Hey, what's up? What happened? I take a, I take him to the the back door of the cabin and I point. Thirty seven. That's 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 terrible, ah, man. Shoo! Thirty eight. Ah, shoo! Thirty nine. <laughs> You're an asshole. You want any pudding? Sure. Sweet. And I just hand him the jar of pudding. There's no spoon. It's like an industrial 24 ounces of pudding. Like like one of the big cans of pudding. Oh, I got an idea. God, that's unsanitary. Hmm. You know, tapioca can be really useful. I'll head out of the uh, back of the bunkhouse door. And while <clears throat> Quentin is sneezing away, uh, I'm going to work my way behind his cabin to the other side of it. Uh, and I'm going to lay a little um, bait for some nighttime visitors for Quentin's room. Laying a trail of tapioca. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I'm going to open it up and then just sort of trail the tapioca into a big sort of amorphous blob at the broken water damaged corner of that tent. So that way the... The raccoons and all of the possums, etc., can come right up. Maybe even a bear. Who knows, right? Come right up to the that camp uh, in the middle of the night and scrape at the walls. Kid won't sleep for a week, guaranteed. Yeah, I imagine when you come back and it's like half empty can, I'll just be like, hey, I said you could have some. I did have some. I hand you the back of the can. 48. Shoot. 49. Quentin, this cabin that you have been assigned to, uh, had a sign to you is like we said, there's, there's probably like some dead mice in it. Uh, absolutely dusty. The beds are shoved up against one wall, like propped up on the other side are all the mattresses rolled up, covered in a thick layer of dust and bugs. And there are also a bunch of old boxes stacked in one corner. I've pulled one of the bed frames out. And I found one of the mattresses and unrolled it. That was the source of my first flurry of sneezing and set it up. I grabbed one of the old boxes. I put my luggage, as I think of it, on it. And some opening up. I'm unpacking. I'm literally trying to hang and fold things on like the dirty-ass, gross shelves that are in there. And then I want to... I'm, I'm going to... If there's any doors, I don't know if these things have their own bathrooms or whatever, if the, that's a separate room. In these movies, they are always, there's always a bathroom in the, in the cabin for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. Which never actually is there. So I'm like cracking open the bathroom door. I'm checking that out and then I'm going to see the boxes. Hmm. I'm listening. I don't know if I hear the sounds of people actually engaged in people stuff, but I'm going to sit down on the ground crisscross applesauce as a teacher might say and I'm gonna 
start going through some of these boxes, opening them up, checking out what's inside. Yeah, the boxes are filled with, it looks like camp merchandise, camp uh, uniforms, old camp information. Uh, you pick up one of the shirts and hold it up and it has a it's, a, it's a yellow shirt, but very faded. It has this cartoon clown face on it. And across the top, it says Camp Laughing Hills. Oh my God, this is super cool. I'm going to put that on immediately. It fits. It's really dusty. That's fine. I'm I'm completely consumed by dust. Do I see anything with the last name McCutcheonson on it? I mean, you don't see anything with the last name McCutcheonson on it. You do see kind of are you you're like kind of going through these boxes some more. You find some old camp photos in it and you like kind of looking on the back of them, they have names written on them and and stuff like that. You see uh, one with the last name Doxon. And you see one with the last name, Marbacher. I grab that picture. I'm like, oh my gosh, I think this is Eugene's. Oh, I got to go show him. And I'm going to grab that. I'm going to put my Pilgrim's Progress on the box on top with a book book uh, a bookmark in it and the, uh, the passage that I was working on. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to look at that real quick. He that is down needs fear no fall. He that is down needs... Oh, so inspirational. Close the book. I'm going to run out with the pa- paper. Eugene, Eugene, just calling across the camp as one does, waving the paper in the air as one does. Are, uh, director, are we like literally right outside, right around the corner of his cabin? Yeah, I mean, it's close enough that you can hear him sneeze and he can hear the numbers that you're saying increase every time. Okay. <laughs> so we see him literally run by screaming. Yeah, I see him run by yelling my name. Well, running towards you, he knows what cabin you're in. And so as long as you're still in that cabin, he knows. and he's wearing this dusty old shirt with this big cartoon clown on it. Uh, and he's holding some photos. In his hands. Eugene, check this out. I found this. I think this is this is someone from your family. I hand the picture over. Uh, I'm what? From my family. You Look at the that? back. It's your name. Uh. Okay, listen, we have a, I have a very common last name. Farbacher comes, it's, uh, I won't get into it, but it's it's very far-reaching. It goes all over the place. Yeah, but look, I think they, they got the same eyebrows as you too. It looks like you. Check it out. So uh, Eugene gives a perusal to what he's, Quentin is obviously shoving in his face and by the handful now. Yeah, you take a look at it. It's a group of counselors. It has uh, the cabin that Quentin has been sent to behind it. You can see because there's a number six on it. And then someone has scratched in a number nine next to it. And it says Adrian Farbacher. Adrian? Adrian? Hmm. Let me see. Do I have any older relatives named Adrian or... Did I? Did I ever hear my dad talk about a brother or? Why don't you roll me in Enigma's, uh, let's say Enigma's intellect. I, three successes. You remember your parents, you, you distinctly remember your parents saying the name Adrian. It's usually not in your presence. And it's usually when your mom is about a bottle and a half of wine deep that she starts saying something about Adrian. And if you're around, they kind of shoo you out of the room. Adrian, that's the name of the that's the name of the guy from that movie that my mom likes. She gets all weird around every time she gets drunk. I think it had Marlon Brando in it. Or hmm. He does kinda look like me. Who else is in the picture? Uh, there's also an Ashley Dachshund that looks a, a lot like Kevin with a wig. Eugene chuckles a little evilly at the concept of having a picture of Kevin in a wig. And knowing that there's probably a primitive photocopier around here somewhere. But he he files that for later, possibly never. Good to have on the back burner. You know, I think probably we should, we should go find Kevin. This, this is actually pretty cool. Come on, Quinn. Sure. Hey, Eugene, too. There's a lot of these shirts. If you want one, I'd probably find one that fits you, too. Maybe fits all of us. Wow. That's um, it so, yeah. Be like a club. We, that is an idea. Yeah, we'll definitely toss that one around. So, yeah, come on, Quinn. But for now, you just keep your moldy shirts to yourself, please. 
and I will follow. I will follow my new found muse and the guide to what's cool around the camp. Oh Lord! Assuming that you are both going to find Kevin and Lance. Oh, absolutely. Where would they find Kevin and Lance? Well, uh, for Kevin, he's probably finished unpacking at this point. And so he's making sure that, you know, he's making sure that uh, the gremlin is properly prepared for any potential, uh, any potential night excursions it may encounter. He's probably, you know, sitting by the, the, the back hatch, making sure that like the, the blankets are set and, you know, seating is, is right and dusting things off and probably doing like last minute cleaning. Probably also gawking at the girls' ca- cabin rows. Whereas Lance is putting up uh, sheets, extra sheets that he's found in order to like block off his own corner of the cabin from everybody else. Like just you know, drop to the ceiling and he's found like a staple gun and he's just stapling the sheets to the wood rafters. We'll, we'll stick, stick the camera with Lance for a second. Lance, you are stapling the uh, sheets to the roof of your cabin, the walls, to try to make this kind of barrier around where you will be staying. When you get a knock on the door. I, I poke my head out from the sheets and I'm like, Hey, nobody's here. Uh, Eugene looks at Quinn. He, he's actually kind of a joker. Just walk on in. He's a nice guy. Big old teddy bear. Well, are you, sh- are you sure it's okay to do that? I quit. That's why he's hanging up the curtains. So you can walk in. Otherwise, you would just be in the room already. It gives you the opportunity. I bust straight in. Hey, Kevin, are you here? You immediately get hit. Uh, lightly with a staple from across the room that's been ejected from a staple gun. Eugene is now laying on one of the cots that's untaken, laughing hideously to himself. Oh, (laughs) good. That was a good joke. Um, Lance, right? That was a good joke, Lance. Yeah, sorry. I didn't see you there. Yeah, Eugene said you're a joker. (laughs) That's that's funny. That's great. Hey, Lance, do you want a clown shirt? Because we found a bunch in my my private cabin where the new kids stay, and I bet we could get you one. Uh, does he have, like, an example of the shirt? Is it in his hands? I'm wearing it. You're wearing it? And I'm like, so what's the logo look like again? It's like a clown? Yes, it's a big cartoonish 80s style clown face. It uh, It's like the like a cartoon bozo of the clown. I'm going to walk right up to, to Quentin and I'm gonna take a little pair of scissors that I've got in my back pocket, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut the face out of the shirt with the scissors of the clown, and I'm gonna be like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I needed for my jacket. And I do not move while you do that. I just watch while you do that, and do not move it a muscle. Perfect. Yeah, and then I walk over and I'm like, trying to match it up for the space that's empty on my patch jacket. Uh, okay, I mean, that's that's fine, because there's more shirts. Yeah, that's fine. Eugene is listening intently. I bring him the can of pudding, and I'm like, here you go. Oh, thanks. And I'm going to sit on the bed next to Eugene. And I'm just going to dig my hand in and start eating pudding. While this is going on, Kevin, you have got your all your car all set up for whatever hijinks you're going to get into, and you are headed back. Now, the parking lot is an indiscriminate amount of way from the rest of the camp, and uh, oddly enough, uh, it does. you do have to walk along this trail to actually get to the camp proper. Yeah. Now, what you didn't remember when you walked out are these spider webs, uh, covering the path that you walked through previously. That's weird. Okay, so how thick are the webs? They're pretty thin, but as you get closer, you can see that it builds behind that, and also that they are blue in color. I look around. It's got to be some kind of joke. Okay, okay, so perhaps a uh, arrival at the uh, girls' uh, side of the camp. I get it. It's okay. It's, uh, it's cool, man. I uh, take out a pack of Winston's and my 
trusty Bic lighter and I light up a cigarette and then use the lighter to burn away some of the some of the webbing. Yeah, and as the lighter gets close, it's almost like the webs just kind of melt away. But as you're going down the path, they get thicker and thicker and thicker. And you're lighting your lighter and trying to cut through this blue. And then it almost turns pink, the webbing. Pink. That is fucking weird. Colored webbing. Uh, somebody went to a somebody went to a party store. That's what it is. Somebody's somebody came prepared. Kudos to them, I guess. But um, I'm going to turn around and see how far back the car is. Uh, you don't see the car down the path, so you've gone pretty far. But as you turn around, your foot hits something. Okay, I'll uh, I'll look down. You look down and see a foot buried underneath. It's, it's a boot. A boot buried underneath a bunch of this webbing. It's sticking out from it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll kneel down and take a little bit closer look at the boot, but I'm kind of getting a little freaked out. Yeah. You bend down and get closer and you still have your lighter in your hand. And as you get down, the webs melt away from where you were at. And you can see this older gentleman um it uh, looks i don't want to say fresh but it's it's not like an emaciated body or anything like that but his face has been colored completely white with bright red around the eyes and bright blue uh around the mouth and his throat has been cut and there's blood running down his shirt and he is completely wrapped in these webs have i ever seen this dude before you have not what the fuck Judging by his clothes, uh, he might be some sort of uh, hiker, or hitchhiker. You see a backpack nearby. Um. Okay, so it, I I tap his foot. Any response? Oh no, it's 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 like limp, and he his whole body kind of jerks a little bit when you tap it. And I'll grab the backpack. It's like a hiking style backpack, so it's you know long. Oh, okay. So it's got a whole like a whole setup. Anything, anything noticeable in it? Is there a a, um, a smell? Any anything I, I see uh, on the backpack itself? Smells oddly sweet. And when you open up some of the pockets, they are filled with popcorn. Okay, all right. So this is some sort of holdover from like a I don't know, like a uh, maybe some sort of festival. Can I use the backpack as a um, shield for getting? back towards the campground so that way maybe the the webbing collects on it rather than me yeah you absolutely can do that yeah i'm, I'm gonna do that and try to get back to and i am rewarding the group one rewrite for mike being alone and uh checking out the weird stuff it was definitely weird and i checked it out it wasn't at all in my contract and you can make it through the rest of the way through the forest with this, this strange backpack. Uh, the webs go on a little bit further, but they don't reach the camp proper. Okay. And then when I get to the camp proper, I'm going to open the backpack and see beyond the small pockets that a popcorn and what else is in it. There is a, an ID in it, uh, a wallet, uh, and then a lot of clothing. There's also... Uh, like a magazine, but the date on the magazine is 1974. I mean, is it a good magazine or is it? Oh, it's got boobies in it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, now we're cooking with gas. All right. So I, I fold that in half and stick it in my back pocket of my jeans because that's at least useful. And uh, then bring the rest of it back towards the center of camp and uh, see if I can find Lance or and the other folks. Yeah, you can make your way back to the cabin where everyone else is congregated. Hey, you want some popcorn? I call out. Yeah, I want some popcorn. Do you want some pudding? No, not. Hey, Kevin. Not at all. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, so listen, um, I found this on the trail back there, and um, I don't know, it's a little strange. Um, it's sort of dated. I put the camping backpack down on a picnic table nearby. There's some popcorn in it and some clothes. And it's um, it's a little older. I don't know. I think it's been out there maybe a little while. Might want to look at it. 
Well, you know, if anything in there is valuable, you found it on my family's land. It belongs to me. I don't think there's any um, extra cash in the wallet that I found, but you're welcome to it. I pitch Lance the wallet. I want to look through the wallet. Eugene checks out the rest of the stuff, giving it a once over kind of with a scientific eye. Like, how old is it? What's the level of deterioration, fungus, that kind of a thing? It's just fascinating. It, obviously, it's rained on. Water has gotten into it. Things are kind of wet. I mean, this is you know, a waterproof hiking bag, but uh, it can only take so much when it's laying on the ground in the woods. And so some of it's a, a little bit moldy, a little bit gross. The wallet has a few bucks in it, an ID, some membership cards to a couple different places, a picture of like a, a gentleman and a woman and a small child. And other than that, there's really just clothes and extra pair of shoes, uh, like a rolled up sleeping bag. Nice. A couple of bucks. Eugene looks at the membership cards. Huh. Look at this library card. It's useful. Hey, so what's the name on that? Oh boy. Uh, the gentleman's name is Tracy Franks. Tracy Franks. So you can't trust anybody with two first names. You, you know that, right? Seems a little strange. Yeah, Kevin. You're totally right. Eugene Francis keeps very quiet. Now, remember, Kevin found the... This is out of it. But Kevin found the dead body, right? And I didn't dream that part. But you haven't mentioned any of that. No. Kevin is totally not talking about that. All right. Uh, hands the ID to Kevin. You think this looks legit? Maybe. It's a little faded. We should probably try and find whoever owns this stuff and get it back to them. That'd be the honest thing to do. That's a good idea. We should do that. Great job, genius. I quip. There's only one problem. He's dead. Wait. You, you're serious, aren't you? He quips. Yeah, I'm serious, Eugene. He's dead. He's back there on the trail. I had to cut through a bunch of weird spider webs, but there's a whole body there. And since it is your family's land, I suppose that means you also inherit a dead body. I can't believe you saw a dead body. You're shitting me. No, I've shown you almost everything that I took from the scene. The scene? Yeah, when there's a dead body, it's a crime scene. No, what I'm saying is you could show us where it's at. I point over my shoulder. Yeah, right through there. Kevin, show us the body. Show us the body, Kevin. Okay. You got to close your eyes first, though. Uh, I mean, coming from a purely scientific place, like, I, I gotta say, I am curious. I've got my eyes closed. Yep, eyes closed. He takes his glasses off, too, so he really can't see shit. I take another handful of another handful of pudding while my eyes are closed. I tap you. I tap Eugene on the shoulder, just and like sort of bring his one of his arms down and put my finger to my lips in a shushing motion, and I. I, I start walking Quentin towards the body. It's right, it's right over here. It's right over here. Whoa. Just keep walking forward. Okay. I reach in my back pocket and I pull out the Noonie magazine. And I start flipping to a salacious page. Okay. I get I get, I get get Quentin right up to the edge of where the path starts at. And I said, Fa face forward. Stay still. Okay. Now, you sure you want to see a body? <sighs> yeah, I'm sure I lie. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh! <gasps> That is a fucking body. Ah, Kevin! <laughs> uh, I've totally seen naked ladies before, Kevin. <laughs> uh, oh. if, if Lance pokes his head around, Eugene will step from behind Lance to poke his head around as if Lance were an obstacle, too. Now, I wasn't kidding about the dead body. I wasn't spooked, Kevin. <laughs> I wasn't spooked at all, I quip. I point forward on the trail. You can see the boot right there, just before the turn. My God, Lance, Lance, it's your dead body. That's yours. Look, the land is mine. The body, nah, that can go to the cops. But you gotta, it's your responsibility, Lance. The body's in your land. You're in charge. Eugene looks directly at the weird side of Quentin suddenly. You're serious, aren't you? He quips again in a completely different tone. Yeah. I want to walk up and like kick the boot. 
Hey, you walk up, you kick the boot. It's attached to a leg, which is attached to a torso. Also head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Oh, sh- sh- snakies. All right. Ah, uh, that's, uh, that's a real, ah. Uh, can I smell it? Like, if I kick it, like, does it make a smell? There's an oddly sweet smell. Yeah, I'm going to vomit. I'm just going to, I'm going to go do that in the bushes. Well, I've never done one. I, I've been in the morgue a couple of times at my dad's work. I could, I guess I could look at the body if you guys wanted me to. Eugene, wait, when you say you've never done one, what do you mean? I've never done an autopsy, you sicko. It's, it was unclear, Eugene, and I... Oh, is your family, are they morticians? Oh, my dad's a doctor. Oh, you know, my dad says good doctors never see dead people. Uh, my dad says that all people will eventually be dead people and doctors are just, uh, you know, slow in the process. You know what I read this morning, though? He that is down needs fear no fall. And I look meaningfully at the dead body. Lance, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just had too much tapioca pudding. It looks like that's not a problem anymore. Yeah. And I just, like, I wipe that off my face and fling it out in a random direction. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, well, we didn't do anything wrong, so we should, we should let them know. We should let, um... Mr. Morris, he's in charge. He'll know what to do. Yeah, we should probably get him out here. So you guys had to tell Mr. Morris... He's at his cabin, at the manager's cabin, getting things ready for the day. I'm going to go ahead and knock on the door. Hey, um, it's Lance. Oh, uh, hey, Lance, what what can I do for you? You getting everything set up? You getting settled in there? Uh, buddy, you got everything you need? Uh, yeah, no, I'm good, but uh, we've got a situation. I can get you a second mattress if you need a different one or a, one on top of the other. No, no, I appreciate that. That's... It's real great of you, but no, uh, there's something that the guys found out in the woods that you're going to need to know about. Oh, uh, okay. I'll go with you. And the scene kind of cuts to you guys standing with Mr. Morris looking over this dead body. Yeah, it's a, it's a person. It's a people person. Whoa. Uh, yeah, it looks like some uh, some hiker to me. Look, his, his throat's cut, Mr. Morris. It wasn't an accident. Uh, that was probably some animal or something, though. Uh, that can happen out here with the... Um, I mean, you never know what kind of animal. There could be bears out here and stuff. I, uh, But I, you uh, did a great job bringing this to my attention, kids. It's our young adults. And I'm... You don't have to worry about this. I'm going to take care of it. Oh, yeah? You're going to drag him out yourself? That's, that's pretty wild. Oh, I don't want you to worry about how it, it'll be handled. I'll, you know, I'll call the police. I'll have them come up. We'll get it all cleaned up before the campers come tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, the, the residue is going to be the hard part, right, Eugene? Because when the bodies decompose like that, it's going to leave pieces left over. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm surprised it's, it's not as liquid. It's not squishier than it is now. I mean, it really should be mostly liquid. And the bloating has already started. I mean, one wrong move and the thing will basically just pop like a, you know, possum on the highway. I'm going to start spitting excess saliva into the bushes. I take three steps back. I appreciate your concern, kids, but uh, really, this isn't this isn't yours to worry about. Uh, you you never should have saw this. Uh, I'm awfully sorry, but I would appreciate your discretion when the parents and the campers arrive tomorrow. Discretion. Discretion, discretion. is important in moments like this. I mean, mm. we just think of Lance's family. They just opened the camp back up. We can't have... Uh, it, we'll get this taken care of, but we can't have... Anyone spooked about the place? Yeah, everybody th- think of my stepdad, Steve. Hey, where'd you get that patch on your jacket? Oh, that? Oh, uh, my good old, my good boy here, uh, Quentin, found it. Quentin, where'd you find that? In my cabin. What do you mean, in your cabin? I'm in the new kid cabin, Mr. Morris, obviously. <laughs> cabin six. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Uh Quentin, I'll have I'll have the ground I'll have the grounds. I'll, someone will come pick those up. Uh, those uh, those those should have been in burned in the garbage a while ago. It's okay, Mr. Morris. I've already cleaned everything up. 
Uh, Mr. Morris is obviously extremely uncomfortable with us having those. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he's going to take a page, uh, Eugene's going to take a page out of Quentin's book and he's going to step up next to Quentin. Uh, You know what, Mr. Morris, Mr. Morris, you, you absolutely have your hands full here. Right, guys? Right, Quentin? Right, Kevin? Lance? We can totally take care of all of the stuff in that cabin, get it all boxed up and ready to go for the maintenance guy. Uh, when old Hank comes by, all he'll have to do is throw it in the back of the truck, right? Let us handle that. You handle this. I appreciate you guys uh, offering to help out. And uh, like I said, discretion is Im- important. Absolutely, Mr. Morris. Discretion is extremely important. Like, uh, you know, like discretion goes both ways. So, you know, if we need a discretion about something at some point, it, we all know how important it is. All right, come on, guys, let's go. But Mr. Morris, uh, when should we get ready for our interview with the police? Do you want us to wear something special? That absolutely will not be necessary, Quentin. Kevin found the body and Lance is responsible because it's his land. Of, of I've seen lots of Columbo and we would talk to the police now. And when they come, they're going to want to interview everyone who's seen anything important, right? For First of all, to be clear, Quentin, the police can talk to my lawyer. May turn around. My gosh, he's got a lawyer, Eugene. Like I said, Quentin, I will take care of everything. Don't you, don't you worry, son. And our camera will cut away and that is where we will end our episode and we will rejoin our cast on the first day of campers arriving. Before we wrap up, though, why don't we get a little take on how our actors are feeling playing these characters and how production is going thus far? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like I'm sort of doing this homage to uh, to Michael J. Fox's buddy character in, not his character, but his Teen Wolf buddy. I feel like I'm doing sort of an homage to Styles with uh, the sort of fast and loose energy. But I don't know that it's coming through all the way. I don't know that I'm, I'm getting it. But we'll, we'll keep working on it. I am enjoying playing uh, Eugene. Playing the 80s geek is fantastic. Those fucking mattresses were literally filled with dust and bugs. There was nothing fake about that. 57 sneezes. Those were all real sneezes. I swear to God, I felt like I was going to die that day on, on, on set. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, actually, I remember John actually tipped over one of the craft tables because he had a consistent sneezing fit. And the number that we used in the third take is actually the actual number that John was up to while filming. Oh, my God. My eyes. T- I mean, I was into makeup three times trying to remove all the effects of this att- this allergy attack. And I, I think it's asbestos. I think I think they didn't tell us. And I think there's something criminal going on here. I think it's his worst as con is personally. Uh, Tegan, playing Lance, any production mishaps that have occurred for you or complaints that you would like to file for the director's cut? No, you see, when they asked me to come over and do this character, they were always asking, was I going to be able to do an American accent? And I said, you know, if, if, you know, if Sean Connery can do any of his performances and just absolutely refused, you know, and he can make good money, then I could come over. But then the first day I was on set, they're like, you can't, that's not what an American teenager even sounds like. And I said, well, fuck. Fantastic. We will look forward to you catching this flick when we resume after the intermission. <laughs>